Hello, it's Karen Rima here. In this video, I'm going to be doing something different, and I'm going to be doing a build order video. Now, nobody likes build order content. At least, I don't think anybody likes build order content. I could be wrong. I mean, Hamza is a successful YouTuber, but he also does more than just build order content. Anyway, the point is, I've noticed that my Eagle Rush build order in the past have really been noob unfriendly because they really don't follow the first 16 villager in a can sort of thing that I personally dislike, but I feel like it would be better to create this as a build order video than it would be to do continue doing it some other way, like how I ha my three previous eagle videos have been doing it in the past. So, with that said, let the build ordering commence. So, the first thing you want to do after your six villagers on sheep is you want to put your seventh villager on wood after building a lumber camp. This is standard stuff, and your eighth through tenth villagers should also be going onto wood, as I put in the title text beforehand. Also, full disclosure here, I am playing on full tech tree mode, just to give the illusion of having a generic civ, because I really did not feel like one in particular of the three American civilizations provided a good enough generic feeling. That said, this doesn't turn out perfectly, but all three American civs have relevant Dark Age bonuses that should make the build smoother for each of them. For example, if I were playing legitimate Incas, I wouldn't have to build a house here. Villager 11 should lure your first four. After Villager 11 has lured your four, Villager 12 should build a house, if you're not playing Incas, and a mill. Please excuse my terrible mill placement. I had literally played three team games prior to this, the last of which I disconnected on, and that's basically everything that I've had since I got my laptop back from the shop. It's been a while. It's nice to see you again, even though I can't actually see you. It's nice to metaphorically see you again. You know what I mean. So, I, I, I hate to awkward silence this. I'm... I legitimately am at a loss for content, but I... to just, like, talk about here, but at the same time, I also don't want to, like, fast forward through any of this since we're having build order stuff going on. One thing you'll notice is that I'm not sending a new villager to take the boar. This is more about trying to get the timing right than it is about personal preference about build orders. Villager 17 should build a house and then go on to the second wood line. Villager 18 should build the lumber camp for the second wood line. I fucked this up in the recording and I was too lazy to redo it. Villager 19 should also go on to your second wood line. Yum. 
Villagers 20 through 22 should go on gold, with Villager 20 building the mining camp on that gold. As you are advancing up to feudal age, you should have 5 on gold, and you will put Villagers 23 and 24 onto gold after you hit feudal age. When you are at 22 villagers, making up 4 lost villagers as necessary, you should pick up Loom and advance to the Feudal Age. This is slightly delayed from my recording because of the lack of a legitimate economic bonus because playing on full tech tree mode, but this should work out much better when you are actually playing as one of the actual civilizations. Two villagers from food should be building two barracks. We have one villager from food to wood directly, use one of your barracks villagers to build a house, and then move both builders to gold. If you are playing in the definitive edition, Feel free to use this opportunity to add a villager to your town center's queue so that it does not fall idle when you hit feudal age. There is a lot to do and having to do one last thing is very important. The economic distribution that you should aim to have is on the screen right now. However, having 10 on food and 4 on gold is acceptable, and having 11 on food and 3 on gold will still get the inevitable job done. You simply have to reassess how you move villagers to gold as soon as you hit feudal age. There are three things that you need to do the instant you hit feudal age. You need to queue Eagle Scouts at both barracks. You need to cast one of your villagers from wood to build a blacksmith. And you need to task one of your lumber camps to research double bit axe. In addition, villagers 23 and 24 need to go on to gold. Villagers 25 and up can go on to wood, hopefully split evenly between the lumber camps. Depending on if you have pushed deer and consequently how much food you have left on your sheep, you can take one of two approaches here. You can either research horse collar to assist with building farms, or you can research foraging to help your eagles while you still have the opportunity to get more food to transition onto farms later. In addition, you need to make sure that you're not getting housed, which is something that I do a lot here, simply because I keep forgetting that I'm not playing actual Incas right now. Eventually, you will be able to add additional barracks. When you should do so, and when you should prioritize farms instead, depends solely on how the game is going, and it's not something that I'm going to try to make a statement on at the moment, simply because it depends, as everybody needs to hear. So from here on out, the build is basically freestyle, though you should aim to have at least four barracks, but no more than five by the time you've clicked up to castle each. To sustain one barracks eagle production, you need to have three on gold and one on food, plus six on food to sustain town center production. I like having one extra on gold so that I can have net gain so that I can hit castle age on additional gold that I can use to power spike my eagles.
In this game, I'm taking an economic approach, which means that I'm prioritizing adding farms and researching technologies over creating more eagles. Sometimes, you may want to have the quantity of eagles up more quickly, and in those situations are situations that warrant adding racks before adding additional farms. However, in your situation, it may be worthwhile to add additional barracks before adding additional farms. Just remember that when you are adding additional barracks, that it is best to use three villagers to accelerate getting the barracks up, and so that you have those three villagers directly on standby to go to gold immediately after you have the barracks up. Food production should not be a concern and should be oriented directly towards getting up to castle quickly. That said, it is usually worthwhile to pick up gold mining during feudal rather than after feudal. Depending on how the game is going, you may want to advance to Castle Age either on Blacksmith Market, akin to a past castle build, or on Blacksmith Archery Range, in case you need to add slingers to counter enemy men at arms. Fun fact unless it has changed since Spirit of the Law released that video, Incas actually have access to slingers in full tech tree mode, so being in full tech tree mode right here is not a factor to consider when debating whether to go slingers here. However, usually if I want to end the game quickly, I will prefer to add in the market so that I can sell my stone and get additional gold to help with the eagle power spike. It's also worthwhile to eventually add a second mining camp, just to help with villager efficiency, especially with the definitive additions pathing. Thanks, DE. That is the entirety of my tips and tricks for eagle rushing during Feudal Age, so to fill the void between here and Castle Age, I'm going to reestablish a few basic essentials about eagle rushing at its core. Eagles are the superior feudal unit because they are scout units that power spike like archer units. As in, similarly to how the Castle Age crossbow power spike exists, the Castle Age Eagle power spike exists, whereas Scout Cavalry can't really be power spiked into the Castle Age, and you have to start anew with a different unit line in the night. Similarly to Archers, this of course creates the appeal that you have 30 to 40 as a very liberal estimate units, Castle Age units immediately upon hitting Castle Age. Eagles are also very favored because they are very unintensive and very intensive to counter. One Eagle Scout costs 20 food, whereas a Men at Arms to counter an Eagle Scout costs 60 food, and a Scout Cavalry that beats an Eagle Scout 1 to 1 costs 80 food. Neither of these are investments that you want to take with you into an extended Eagle situation, between the fact that food is already very scarce during Feudal Age, and the fact that you have to have the upfront wood investment in order to be able to make those farms in order to have that upfront food investment. It's a lose-lose situation if you want to try to counter eagles, except for maybe, perhaps, trying to use micromanaged archers, similar way to how you use micromanaged archers to counter scout cavalry in certain situations and how you use micro crossbows to counter knights in certain situations, especially during early castle age. What makes the eagle power spike stronger than the crossbow power spike in this situation 
is simply that within a minute of hitting Castle Age, you have an army that can easily threaten enemy town centers. Whereas the crossbow power spike cannot easily threaten town centers quickly, and knights require the investment in order to be pre-massed. An Eagle Scout with every upgrade except for Iron Casting should theoretically have the same damage output against buildings as a Knight while costing significantly less per unit and being just about as tanky against Arrow Fire. Immediately upon hitting Castle Age, there are five technologies that you can pick up for your Eagle units. Pick them up in the following priority. Chainmail Armor, Arson, Squires, Eagle Warrior, and Iron Casting. With upgrades mentioned first being of a higher priority. If you know for a fact that you can afford all five of these upgrades, go ahead and add a second blacksmith while you're advancing up to the castle age. This will help accelerate your power spike and make you even more ridiculously overpowered than you already were. Depending on the situation, if you are playing Incas, you may want to add Slinkers, if you are playing Mayans, you may want to add Crossbows, if you are playing Aztecs, you may want to add Crossbows or Jaguars. If your opponent has massed men of arms in order to be able to counter your Eagles. However, in the case of fully upgraded Castle Age Eagle Warriors versus Feudal Age men of arms, you should be able to win the engagement into one albeit not very cost-effectively. With that said, and the AI about to resign, I would like to thank you for watching. Offer a suggestion to like and subscribe. If you are viewing this from Reddit, I would like you to see my last video that I forgot to advertise, and I will see you next time.